I'm Lawrence Wintermeyer. Welcome to the Digital Asset Report. Today, I have Simon Chamorro, co-founder and CEO of Value. Welcome, Simon. Thank you, Lawrence. Simon, can, can you give uh, our uh, viewers a bit of a background of exactly what Value is and, and, and whereabouts are you in the world? Yeah, um, I'm currently in Colombia, uh, in Bogota. And uh, Value is um, it's a fintech company, a combination between crypto and fintech. Um, and what we're achieving in Latin America is democratizing access to, to dollars or to strong currencies. Um, because the history of our continent and of our region is that our currencies are losing value or depreciating against stronger uh, currencies and we import a lot of things. We import, we have net importer countries, um, we, we, we have a, a lot of macroeconomic situations and but access to dollars or to stronger currencies is not easy. So what we're effectively doing is um, uh, uh, borderless um, dollar account that allows people to pay each other in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, allows people to save in dollars um, and to send money to each other at no cost. Um, so you can think of value as a Western Union meets Benmo for Latin America or in the case of Europe, something similar to Revolut with dollars. Yeah, and I, I love that analog. And, and, you know, quite often in my world, I think people always have what I call a G20 lens on and they don't appreciate the importance of crypto assets or digital currencies in, in countries where that there are deflations of, of fiat currencies naturally and, and, and you know, the trade flows you've spoken about. So can you tell us how, how is the, the value dollar backed? So when we started the value dollar was uh, initially backed in Bitcoin uh, derivatives. The reason for, for that was because uh, Bitcoin is the only or the highest liquidity has the highest liquidity with fiat pairs in Latin America. So for on ramps or cashing in from fiat into crypto, Bitcoin was the perfect rail, uh, either for cashing in or for cashing out. So um, what we did is take that Bitcoin and hedge it uh, in derivatives, futures, perpetual swaps. So we had a synthetic exposure to the dollar through these uh, trading uh, strategies. Uh, but currently we are uh, migrating to back it with USDC, which is USD coin. Um, it's, um, it's a cryptocurrency that is backed one for one in US dollars. And it enables uh, a really uh, easy and, um, and a really seamless um, on and off ramp with the United States. Because a lot of people in Latin America and companies want to also move money from in and out the United States. So that works extremely well for that. Yeah, and an another great use case for USDC. So now you, you've mentioned Venmo and, and Revolut uh, sort of use cases, but can you give us an example of what uh, people are actually doing today with value? Yeah, so um, given that uh, the regulatory environment is still pretty kind of new for crypto in Latin America, we had to start with something that uh, was very strategic. So we started with the Venezuelan diaspora, which is um, it's, it's a migration that is coming to most Latin American countries. And it's a problem for most governments because it's in the millions of people. Um, and we're helping these people send money back to Venezuela, which is a country that collapsed, where the, where the currency failed. And uh, naturally, uh, like in most hyperinflationary economies, uh, we, we, it got dollarized. Um, and uh, now in Venezuela, people are using cash dollars and a lot of people are opening bank, bank accounts in the US. So we're effectively helping migrants in Colombia send uh, crypto dollars or stable coins back to Venezuela and almost generating this kind of like internal economy where people are paying each other in a peer to peer fashion. We're going to be enabling merchants. So we're really focused on this Venezuelan use case. And it's really interesting because through the diaspora, we can expand to every Latin American country, build these cash in cash out systems or on and off rooms first, and then um, kind of offer this dollar product to, to the local populations of Colombia, Peru, Chile, Brazil. Well, well and you know, I applaud this uh, in looking at the use case because the practical use case uh, in, in, in this instance of a stable coin backed uh, a stablecoin-backed vehicle is that people are actually using it to live, 
uh, and, and using it for you know their day-to-day -day sustenance and, and, and the things that they need, which I think is critical. Now, I know you mentioned uh, on-ramps, off-ramps, and, and can you give us a view, particularly within the regulatory context, which very few of our viewers will be familiar with in, in, in Colombian LADAM, what the landscape wa uh, looks like and, and wh where there, there is friction in on-ramps or off-ramps and where's that, wh where, where's that whole space going? Yeah, um, it's definitely the early days. Um, so um, in every Latin American country has a different, um, a different regulatory situation. What we've seen lately is that Colombia just launched a regulatory sandbox for crypto companies to work with local banks. We've seen that in Mexico with the fintech license as well. We're seeing uh, sparks of that in Brazil. So um, it's, a, it's a wave that is starting to happen, but it happens lower because uh, banks, which are traditionally uh, have a lot of leverage, uh, a lot of lobby with local governments, they, they want to kind of like ride this wave. And so they're kind of like understanding it little by little, and it's kind of being enabled little by little. So the, um, um, in Colombia specifically, where, where, which is where we operate, we um, legally have to operate under what's called a free market. Um, and um, we have to sell this crypto assets. It's called, uh, they, they, they don't, the government doesn't call them cryptocurrencies. They, they say that they're assets or securities. Um, and, um, and we have to sell them to the user. So it's a commercial activity. Um, and um, every country has its little nuances. Um, but the hardest part for us has been the off-ramps. So cash-ins and on-ramping, it's easier because we can sell this asset. But once we have this asset and we want to convert it back to fiat, especially in Colombia, we have to close deals with banks. And um, for us to close deals with banks, we have to almost be as compliant as a bank. So we have really tough, like really well-developed KYC processes, anti-money laundering processes, consumer financial uh, protection uh, processes. Um, we have uh, anti-fraud systems and to kind of like check transactions. So we really have all these things that a bank would need um, so that the bank work with us because the bank is regulated with the, with the local um, uh, regulators, which is called the Superfinanciera. Um, so it definitely presents a challenge and it requires a lot of capital. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's quite important to to uh, raise uh, large, large amounts of capital and build a large team so that you can tackle all, all these things at the same time. So yeah, not an easy task. No, it isn't, but the, I think the reassuring uh, message uh, to regulators is that you're working with banks and you're working with all of the issues of KYC, AML, and, you know, in, in both the on-ramps and the off-ramps in order to get your transactions done. And that's, uh, uh, that's what most responsible players in the industry are doing these days. And then Simon, lastly, can you give us an idea of the number of users and, and, and the volume of value and, and just you know, where you see it going over the next 12 to 36 months? So currently we have uh, in total 40,000 users, a little bit over 43,000. Um, and this month we are uh, having about 17,000 um, uh, monthly active, uh, which are people that are actually paying transacting users. Um, the volumes of last month uh, was um, close to $1 million in, in total payment volume uh, being moved between Colombia and Venezuela. And, um, and uh, this has been basically for the past 13 months since, since we launched the product. Um, and we're growing fast because the need, as you mentioned, for, um, for dollars in a country like Venezuela where people are effectively surviving, um, it's high, it's very, very high, the remittances. Now Venezuela, the second uh, economic driver for Venezuela after petroleum is remittances. Um, I would even say that it's gonna pass it really soon because the government, uh, the dictatorship and the regime in Venezuela hasn't been um, working on the petroleum industry for quite a long time. And it's really like uh, left uh, um, to the side. So, so we're seeing that remittances is a really important lifeline and that's being proven with the traction that we've had. In the next uh, 12 months, um, the next years, what we'll continue to do is um, we'll continue to enable uh, on and off ramps in Colombia, in Venezuela, and in the United States. We're gonna enable on and off ramps with the US. Then we're moving to Chile, 
uh, which is an important country that is receiving a lot of diaspora. And we're going to continue to uh, offer free peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Um, potentially, we're going to partner with banks to offer fiat uh, accounts as well. So like multi-currency, uh, it's going to become almost like a multi-currency product where you're going to have Colombian pesos or uh, Chilean pesos or even US dollars, but also you're going to have this stable coin that allows people to you know, send it for free and immediately between countries. Um, and after we have critical mass, we're going to start enabling uh, offering credit uh, because it's a, a really interesting uh, revenue stream. And it's also something that most people need to kind of like, you know, move forward and, and, and actually build, um, build businesses. Well, what an exciting future. And Simon, thank you for sharing uh, with us the value use case today. Uh, we really enjoyed this. We're, we're going to have to have you back in a few months and, and, and catch up with things and, and, and see how things are going. But Simon Chamorro, co-founder and CEO of Value, thanks for being on the Digital Asset Report. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Take care. Bye.